In this video, you're going to learn how to factor trinomials using the box method. So for a lot of students, factoring can be a real challenging uh, part of learning algebra, but this method oftentimes makes it uh, a lot easier for students. So we're going to go through 10 examples together. Later on in the video, you might want to try to pause the video and try some of the examples on your own to get some more practice, but let's dive in. So the basic idea here is you have a polynomial that has three terms. That's why we call it a trinomial and you take this leading coefficient, whether it's one or something other than one, and you multiply it by the constant. That's the product a times c. So you say to yourself, what two numbers multiply to this product, a times c, but they also, those same two numbers, have to add to this middle of coefficient, b. And then what you do is you put this first term here in the upper left-hand corner, the constant in the lower right-hand corner, and then those two numbers that you found here are gonna go in these two boxes, and then I'll show you what to do from there. So let's go through some examples. It's a lot easier than it sounds. So you'd say three times negative eight. So you're saying what two numbers multiply to negative 24, but they have to add to this middle coefficient, negative two. Now this is probably the toughest part about the problem but it's really not that bad. So what two numbers multiply to negative 24, but also add to negative two? Well, that's gonna be negative six times positive four, that equals negative 24, and negative six plus four, that adds up to negative two. Okay, great. So we're gonna take this first term, put it in our upper left-hand corner. We're gonna take our constant, negative eight, make sure if it's a minus, you put the negative there. If it's plus, it's a positive. And then using these two numbers, what we're gonna do is we're going going to write negative 6x and 4x. So don't forget the variable. When you add these together, that adds up to negative 2x. So we're not really changing the problem at all. We're just writing this in two separate parts that adds up to that middle term. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at these rows horizontally, and we're going to say to ourselves, what's the greatest common factor? What can I factor out of both of these terms? Well, it looks like I can factor out a 3x. And if I divide this by 3x, I'm left with x. If I divide this by 3x, I'm left with negative 2. Now for this second row, I say, what can I factor out of both of these? What's the greatest common factor? In this case, I can factor out a 4. And let's double check. 4 times x is 4x. That's good. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. That's good. And so what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, this is the area of a rectangle. That's like length times width. So it's going to be 3x plus 4 times x minus 2. And you can check your work. If you FOIL this out or distribute twice, you're going to get back this original. So this is your final factored form. Now when you do factoring problems, any type of factoring problem, you always want to look for a greatest common factor first. And if you can factor out that greatest common factor out of your trinomial, do that first and then use the box method to factor further. Let's go to example number two. So let's go through this process. So we say, hmm, a times c. So six times seven, that's 42. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 42, but they have to add to this middle coefficient, negative 17. Now what's interesting is a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative plus a negative is a negative. So that tells me both of these have to be negative numbers. So what would that be? Well, it could be negative one and negative 42, and sometimes it helps to write these down, like negative 1 and negative 42, negative 2 and negative 21, uh, negative 6 and negative 7. Uh, what else could you do? Negative 14 and negative 3. Okay, it looks like it's this one right here. Negative 14 and negative 3, that multiplies to positive 42. But if I add those two numbers together, I get the middle coefficient, negative 17. So we're going to put the first term over here in the upper left-hand corner. We're going to put the constant in the lower right. And then these two numbers here, we're going to put, and it doesn't matter the order. So I could put uh, negative 3x here and negative 14x here, or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Just make sure to put your variable here, x. So when you add these together, see how it gives us back the negative 17x? Okay, now we're going to look at the rows this way. And we say, what can we factor out of both of these two terms? Well, it looks like we can factor out a 3x. If I divide this by 3x, I'm left with 2x. If I divide this by 3x, I'm left with negative 1. And then what's the greatest common factor here in this row? It looks like we can factor out uh, a 7, but when it starts with a negative, I always factor out a negative number, so negative 7. So now let's check our work. Negative 7 times 2x, that gives us negative 14x. 
and negative seven times negative one is seven. So now we know we've got the right answer. We're gonna take this group here, two x minus one, times this group here, which is three x minus seven, and you can check your work if you distribute twice or if you know the FOIL method, you'll get back the original trinomial. So let's take a look at some more examples. Okay, let's take a look at number three now. We've got x squared minus x minus 12. How would we factor that one? Well, using our a times c, we say what? Now this one, you notice there's not a coefficient in front of the x squared term. That means it's understood to be a one. So one times negative 12. So what two numbers multiply to negative 12? But same thing here, there's not a coefficient. That means it's a one. So this is a negative one. So they have to add to negative one. So let's see, let's make a list here. We could do uh, one and 12, two and six, three and four, right? Those all multiply to 12, but to be negative, one of the numbers has to be positive, one has to be negative. So it looks like here, we're gonna have negative four and positive three, that multiplies to negative 12, but negative four plus three equals negative one. Okay, good. So we're gonna put our first term up here in the upper left-hand corner. We're gonna put our constant in the lower right-hand corner. We're gonna take our two numbers and we're gonna split this into uh, these two boxes, negative four x and three x. And again, remember, it doesn't matter the order. Just make sure you put your variable x here. And now we're gonna look at the rows horizontally. We're gonna factor out the greatest common factor. So what can we factor out of both of these? Looks like we can just factor out an x. If I divide this by x, I'm left with x, which makes sense because x times x is x squared. If I divide this by x, I get negative four. And that makes sense because x times negative four is negative four x. Looking at this row, what can we factor out of both of these? Looks like the greatest common factor is three. If I divide this by three, I get x. If I divide this by three, I get negative four. Or you can do like I did in some of the other problems, three times negative four is negative 12, three times x is three x. And now we've got it. So it's this group times this group. And again, the order doesn't matter. I could do x plus three times x minus four, or I could switch it up. I could say x minus four, times x plus three. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so you can change the order. Okay, let's go to number four now. If you're starting to get the hang of this, see if you can try this one on your own. So what do we do here? We take our a times our c, so eight times 10, which is equal to 80. So what two numbers multiply to 80, but they have to add to this b value, which is positive 21. Now, I'll give you another hint here. Sometimes when it's a bigger number, and you, let's say your teacher says no calculators, right? Sometimes what students will do is they'll make a prime factorization tree. They'll say, okay, 80 is uh, 8 times 10, and 8 is 4 times 2, and 10 is 2 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write these numbers down. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to make two groups. So for example, I could do uh, 4 See, two times two is four, and then two times two times five is 20. So you can see like four times 20 is equal to 80. Or if, say, if that's not the combination you want, maybe you take this group here, you say two times two times two is eight, times two times five is 10. Oh yeah, eight times 10 is 80. So you're trying to make two groups, and those two groups will multiply to 80. So sometimes if you're trying to figure out, uh, you're having trouble figuring out what the combinations are, you might wanna try this prime factorization tree method. But let's go ahead and look at this closer. It looks like this is actually going, going to be uh, five and 16. So five times 16 is 80, and five plus 16 equals 21. So we're gonna put our first term over here in the upper left-hand corner. We're gonna put our constant 10 in the lower right-hand corner. Remember to capture whether it's positive or negative, okay? And then these two numbers, we can write them either here or here. Now, sometimes it's easier to put one in one place and one in the other place, but it doesn't really matter. You're gonna get the same answer in the end. Just make sure you put your variable there. Okay, so now looking horizontally, what can we factor out as the greatest common factor? So for the top row, it looks like we can factor out an eight X. So that'll leave us with X and two. And in the bottom row, it looks like we can factor out a five. And let's double check, that's five X, five times two is 10. Okay, great, we got it. So our final result will be eight X plus five times the quantity x plus two. And again, you can check your work by foiling or distributing twice, or what I saw somebody mention this online as the moon method. I don't know if you can see this, it's like kind of like a, a crescent moon, <laughs> okay? 
Let's take a look at some more examples. Okay, see if you can pause the video and try number five and six if you want some practice here. But for number five, let's follow the same process. So we're saying a times c, so nine times 25, which is like nine quarters, that's $2.25, or we could say 225. So what two numbers multiply to 225, but add to our b value, which is negative 30. So kind of a large number here, you might wanna do that prime factorization tree method that I showed you. Or this one I happen to know is uh, 15 times 15, or we could do a negative 15 times negative 15 is positive 225, but negative 15 plus negative 15 is negative 30. Okay, that's the toughest part about the problem. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put the first term in the upper left-hand corner, our constant in the lower right-hand corner, making sure to capture whether it's positive or negative. And then we take our two numbers and we put them in these two boxes, remembering our variable x as well here. So negative 15x plus negative 15x gives us our middle term back, negative 30x. So now looking horizontally, we're looking at our greatest common factor that goes into both of these terms. Looks like that's gonna be 3x. So 9x squared divided by 3x is 3x, and negative 15x divided by 3x is negative 5. And what's our greatest common factor here? Notice when it starts with a negative, I like to factor out a negative. So this would be a negative five. And 3x times negative five, you can see, gives us negative 15x. And negative five times negative five is positive 25. So now we've got our two factors. And notice what we've got here. We've got 3x minus five and another 3x minus five. So what you could do on this problem is write it as the quantity squared. 3x minus five, the quantity squared, since it's the same thing twice. Okay, for number six, what would you do on this one? Well, if I was gonna do it, I would follow that same process, a times c, five times negative 18 is a negative 90, but those same two numbers have to add to our middle coefficient, our b value, which you can see if there's not a number there, it's a one, in this case, a negative one, since it has that minus sign there. Okay, so what two numbers multiply to negative 90, but add to negative one? Well, it looks like that's going to be negative 10 and positive nine. So those multiply to negative 90, add to negative one. Okay, let's go ahead and put our leading term here in the upper left-hand corner, our constant term in the lower right-hand corner, and then the other two quantities are gonna go in these two boxes, remembering our variable, so negative 10x and 9x. Okay, so looking horizontally, we're gonna factor out our greatest common factor, which is 5x, so that'll leave us with x and negative two. Greatest common factor in this bottom row looks like it's gonna be nine. Double checking, we get nine X and negative 18. And now we can write our factored form. So five X plus nine. See if there's not a negative here, this is understood to be plus nine, okay, positive nine. And then this factor here, X minus two. And again, it doesn't hurt to check your work by foiling or distributing twice. And you got it. Let's take a look at some more examples. Okay, before we do number seven and number eight, if you wanna learn more about factoring, you like the way that I explain things, check out my video, Learn How to Factor or Learn Factoring uh, on YouTube. And you can see, I go through all the different types like uh, factoring by grouping and uh, sum of two cubes, difference of two cubes, difference of two squares, all the different techniques and how to recognize them as well. So, but let's jump back into this video here with number seven and number eight. See if you can do these problems. If I was gonna do number seven, I would say, okay, four times 11, what multiplies to 44, but has to add to this middle coefficient of 24. So let's see, we could write some of the factors down. We could do one and 44, that would work. We could do two and 22, that multiplies to 44. Uh, we could do four and 11. And of course, it could be two negatives or two positives, right? So in this case, it looks like it's gonna be this one, uh, two times 22 and two plus 22 satisfies these requirements. So we're gonna go ahead and put that four X squared in our upper left-hand corner, our constant in the lower right. And then it doesn't matter the order here, I'll just put a two X here and 22 X here. That adds up to our middle term 24 X. Now factoring out the greatest common factor horizontally, looks like we can factor out a two X, which will leave us with two X plus one. Here we can factor out an 11, and you can see 11 times 2x is 22x, and 11 times 1 is 11, so we know we've got it. And if we write this down now, we've got this quantity, 2x plus 1, times this quantity here, 2x plus 11. Again, you can check your work if you want to you know, make sure. Okay, for number 8, what did you get on number 8? 
<clears throat> now this one, it looks like we've got what two numbers multiply to 7 times negative 10, which is negative 70, but they have to add to our middle coefficient, negative 3. So it could be 1 in 70, 2 in 35, uh, 7 and 10. Okay, it looks like it's 7 and 10, but the 10 is going to be negative and the 7 is going to be positive. This way it adds up to negative 3. Okay, so first term goes in our upper left-hand corner. Our constant term goes in our lower right. And then it doesn't matter here the order, but I think I'm going to put the 7x here and the negative 10x here. I think that'll be, make it a little bit easier for us. Okay, looking horizontally, what can we factor out? Greatest common factor, it looks like we can factor out a 7x. That'll leave us with x plus 1. Here we can, we can factor out a negative 10. And I like to double check, that's negative 10x. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. And we've got our two factors here, which are 7x minus 10 and x plus 1. And you got it. Let's take a look at two more examples. Before you try example number 9 and number 10, I just wanted to let you know that if you like the way that I explain things, check out my Learn Algebra 1 and Learn Algebra 2 slash College Algebra video courses for sale in the description below. I take you step by step through a typical Algebra 1 curriculum or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra curriculum. So if you're interested in those, check those out in the description. If you want to just support the videos that I'm putting up on my YouTube channel, my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, consider becoming a supporting member. So for a few dollars a month, you can help support the videos that I'm putting up here, and I really appreciate that. And lastly, if you just want to uh, find another way to support me, I've got some t-shirts for sale as well on my Teespring store, and you can see links in the description below or some of the uh, t-shirts below this video. So let's go to the last uh, couple examples here and get some more practice. How would you do this one? 2x squared plus x minus 15. Well, if I was going to do it, I would do the AC method, 2 times negative 15, which is negative 30. But they have to add to this middle coefficient, which you can see is understood to be a positive 1. So two numbers that multiply to negative 30, but add to 1, that's going to be 6 and negative 5. And we put our first term up here in the upper left-hand corner. We put our constant in the lower right. And then it doesn't matter the order here. I'm just going to put 6x and negative 5x, and that adds up to our 1x, our middle term. Okay, looking horizontally, what can we factor out as the greatest common factor? It looks like that's 2x, leaving us with x plus 3. And what can we factor out here? It starts with a negative, so we're going to factor out a negative 5. Double checking, that's negative 5x and negative 15. And we've got our two factors, 2x minus 5 and x plus 3. And you can double check by foiling or distributing twice. Okay, last example. What did you get for this one here? Well, let's see. We've got a times c. That's going to be negative 60. Okay, but it has to add up to the middle coefficient, which is negative 7. So what would that be? Well, here, let's write some of the ones on, down here. So 1 in 60, 2 in 30, 3 in 20, 4 in 15, 5 in 12, 6 and 10. But to get negative 60, one of these has to be positive, one has to be negative. Looks like it's going to be this one right here, but it's going to be a negative 12 and a positive 5 multiplies to negative 60, and a negative 12 and a positive 5 adds to negative 7. So putting our first term in the upper left-hand corner, putting our constant in the lower right-hand corner, and then it doesn't matter the order here, I'll just put the 5x here and the negative 12x here. So now looking horizontally across, what can we factor out? Looks like we can factor out a 5x, that's our greatest common factor, leaving us with 2x and 1. What can we factor out here? It looks like a negative 6, because it starts with a negative. Let's double check, that's negative 12x. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Okay, looks like we got it, so our factors are going to be 5x minus 6 times the quantity 2x plus 1, and you got it. So great job if you're able to follow those examples. Again, if you want to get more practice on factoring, not just the box method, but all the other types, follow me over to my Learn How to Factor video right there, and I'll see you in that video.